is a relative frequency. 0 0.700. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, but if you don't need those zeros at the end, if you're looking back at the book, what might you see? You might see 0.7. Anybody know why? You're going to say, oh my God, that's not rounded to the nearest thousandths. Why did they take, why did they get rid of those zeros? You don't need them. If there were other digits, if there was a digit in that last thousandth position, you know, you don't erase the, you don't erase the digits, but if it's zeros here, you get away with erasing it. If you feel more comfortable, put the two zeros. Okay. Now, is that easy or is that hard? All right, let's go to the next one. What's four? You guys have to help me now. We've got to compute 4 over 20. Oh, I think that's 0.25. Is that right? It's 4 over 20. What is that? I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe what, what is it? Point 0.2. Give me all the numbers. Oh, point zero. Oh. Again, we're in that situation. You look at that number. Sorry. You, this is the thousands position. Look at this zero, and guess what? So this is going to be what? 0. Point what? Two. Is that right? OK, let's see. What's the relative frequency for the data value 2? Well, you got 0 over 20. What is 0 over 20? 0. Now, I didn't plan this to turn out this sort of nice this way. Usually, it doesn't turn out. I just gathered data, right? So it wasn't planned. This isn't always going to happen. But these numbers are sort of simple. What will happen, though, usually, is you will have to approximate to the nearest thousands. Uh, what about the last one? 2 over what? 20. What's that? 0.1. Is that right? Doesn't usually happen, but OK. So what I've done here, ladies and gentlemen, I have created what's known as a relative frequency table. Your data values with the relative frequency. Okay, you okay with that? Now I'm going to remark here about relative frequency. I guess I'll put it here. I'll put, a, I'll put another remark. Well, I'll put it here. Uh, here's another thing you want to consider. If I do this, can you tell me what that means? That means to do what? What does that symbol mean? To sum. To sum what? My relative frequencies. What happens when you add these things? What do you get? What's 0.7 plus 0.2 plus 0 plus 0.1? You get what? You get 1. Is that right? Why did I change my equality to this approximation or this proximate symbol? I'm saying the sum of the relative frequencies is approximately 1. Do you guys know, why did I just do this? Why am I saying that the sum is approximately 1? Well, here's what happens. You guys know in this rounding off and this approximation stuff, when you approximate your answers, it didn't happen in this table, but when you do at times, you know, you approximate some of these answers, and you add 1 in one case, and other case you don't, and whatever. But when you go back to add these values, it's not always exactly 1 like it was here. It could be a little bit smaller or a little bit what? Larger. It's, it's approximately 1. So if you've done this process right, some people check it by adding the relative frequencies to see if the value is approximately 1. OK? Some people do that. Whew. OK. Anybody have any questions on this? Is it still easy or is it hard? Easy? So far? All right, well, let me ask you these sort of questions. All right, let's, let's first note a, another concept. Let's note, um, when we talk in everyday life, and this question about how many children do you have, you know, it's a legitimate question, especially asking adults, sorry, this question in the community college setting. Do you guys want to know why? Well, because very often people are interested in this stuff. Educators, the state, whatever. People, administrators, the community, the government, 
you know. They're interested in knowing how many children you have because what do you think can happen? Anybody know? What happens? Who has children here? You're the only one? Only one person has ch children. Good. Child, one child. Who has more than one child here? You got, oh, that's right. You have what? Three. Let me ask you a question, personal question. How is it easy is it to go to school with three kids? Is it hard? How old are they? Eight, six, and one. Eight, six, and one. Mm, that one-year-old probably wants some time. You know, eight-year-old and six-year-old don't want time? Mm, they want some time? They do homework? Yeah. They, yeah. How many hours a week do you work? Um, I'm not working right now. I go back next week. Mm, oh, well. When you go back, yeah. is it going to be easier or is it going to be hard? Wow, I think I'm going to go out and have three kids now because she makes it sound so easy. <laughs> oh, forget it. Is it that easy? What am I talking about? I have one and I'm going crazy. You have three. Huh? It's very hard. And as community college students, what tends to happen, you know, life happens. That's going to dictate really how successful you are in the course and even completing programs. But community colleges are very interested in knowing for students how many children do you, they have? Is there a relationship between the number of children and how successful they are? And what do you think the idea is? I mean, what do you think? Is that, is that something that's true or false? <laughs> Only people that have children know what? That is a very difficult thing to balance everything in life. You got your kids, you got school, you got work, you got other things. It's sort of hard to do. OK? You guys know that? So this question we ask, how many children do you have? Schools actually have data on this information because, you know, they're interested in success in how well you do and when you're not successful, why is that? And, you know, sometimes this is a factor. Okay? So, okay, it's a legitimate thing to ask, but we don't really talk about things in terms of relative frequency. The language we use when we communicate information in this generally involves the word what? Percent. Percent. Oh, another thing we got to talk about. Guess what? If you got to review percent, go where? Go to that website in that same multimedia file. I review concepts of what? Percent. You guys with me on that? So even if we do the work, you go, oh my God, where do you get that answer? How do I? Well, you can go ask a tutor, I guess. You can ask me in office hours. You can find someone, or you can watch this. And you can get sort of a lecture, okay? All right, what's the relationship between percent and relative frequency? You guys really know what's going on? You see this relative frequency decimal value? Right? Every decimal can be represented as a percent, and likewise, every percent can be represented as a decimal. And I go through all that in that presentation. So what I'll do here is show you this simple relationship. I can say you can determine the percent by simply taking the relative frequency and multiplying by what? A hundred. Now the y of which, look at the multimedia presentation. Okay? It's okay. You guys could look at it. I even look at it sometimes. You know, go look at that. All right? So if I want to communicate to people these sort of things, right, or let's ask these questions. 